when it comes to uh, the quality of education for our children is also equally good. Uh, it can also be a very good point of uh, uh, entry for the, particularly for the Indian businessmen and exporters to have Malta as a base uh, to distribute their products across Europe. And the, one of the most important aspects which ma only Malta offers, nobody else, is the gaming zones. Uh, particularly if the companies are interested in establishing the gaming companies, gaming websites, then Malta is the only jurisdiction, as I understand, Janelia, in Europe who provides the, legalizes the uh, mm. gaming. So with all these different topics, Janelia and Anna is going to talk about, I'm not going to take much of the time. So Janelia, it's up to you. Please start the presentation. Thank you. Um, so nice, nice to have you all here. Thank you. Thank you, Ajmira Lofen, for inviting us um, again to be able to, to speak about the programs and more so this time um, have the opportunity to even discuss um, some matters even with, with anyone who would want to you know, open up with any particular topic, um, about any particular topic. Um, I, we can start actually by, by talking about I'd say the relocation options. Um, we've got citizenship and we've got residency. Um, let's let's look a little bit on the uh, requirements and the eligibility of the, of the um, programs and what the benefits from these programs will be. Anna, can you? So before we proceed to the benefits of the programs. I wanted to give a little overview of the island, what you would be actually gaining by choosing Malta as a relocation destination. Malta, first of all, is a very small island, but it's a full member of the EU, and English is the main language, not only of the island, but the full language of the business in Malta. So, which means that the whole business, which is conducted in the island, is held in English. All the documents are in English, which makes it very easy for investors to relocate here and use it as their benefit. Secondly, Malta is amazingly located in the middle of Europe, Middle East, and Africa, the, in the center of all the important economic crossroads, and also provides the excellent ICT infrastructure. As well, it is a very, very safe country, safe from crime, safe from natural disasters, so it's perfect to settle here. It's stable in terms of social and industrial climate. It offers amazing advantage corporate tax regime where it can go as low as 5% for the company's income, etc., etc. And Moshi's government tries to do everything possible to attract foreign investors by also providing various investment support measures, which can include specific packages designed for particular investment times, whether it could be allocation of space or fiscal benefits or any other access to finance, which can help investors to come here, not somewhere else, basically. Also, Malta is uh, one of the countries where it could be good for your children to study, making it for one of the best for percent worldwide uh, within university education, as well as the fifth best country in the world in, and first best in Europe in healthcare facilities and healthcare access to the population. Also, since we are presenting this for our Indian colleagues, we wanted to focus a little bit more on the Indian population, considering the size of, the, of Malta, which is only as Janela mentioned earlier, 500,000 people in Malta, we would say that Indian population is already quite big on the island. And these are the official numbers, which says that there are 3,200 Indians living. But to be honest, I think there is much more every day because people come and come because they find it very suitable location and very comfortable to live in, as well as good for the relocation of their companies. For example, there is a very well-known Aurobindo pharmaceutical plant based in Malta, which is a leading Indian company. Um, and it's an ex not an exception that Indian communities also celebrate their holidays in Malta, such as Diwali, 
Polyona and other Hindu festivals. And obviously everyone likes Indian food. So there are a lot of Indian restaurants in Malta as well. But talking about some main numbers, if we look at the GDP growth in Malta, we don't have the statistics of 2020, but as you can see on the, on the screen, it's, it shows a stable and continuous growth, growth every year. And for example, for 2019, GDP was worth 15 billion US dollars, which is quite a big number for such a small country again. Um, another number I would like to focus your attention on is the unemployment rate, which is one of the lowest in the world again, which on January 2020 was 3.2% only, even considering the, the disruption which happened due to the coronavirus. I would say that Malta managed to handle it quite well with all the support measures and trying to support the employee, employers in order to safeguard the employment. I wouldn't say that this, this benchmark of 3.2% went too high. It's, it's going down again. And uh, as you can see on the bottom graph, uh, the foreign direct investment also is uh, for 2000, July 2019 has been increased until 1,000 million euros, which just proves how attractive it is for foreign investors to, uh, to invest in Malta. Now I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Janella so she can introduce the main programs of Maltese citizenship and residency. Good. Um, good to give you some rest. So uh, yes, actually, I I wanted to take this opportunity. It's going to be the first time um, we're going to be talking about the new um, uh, citizenship program, um, which the government is is going to launch in the coming weeks. Um, uh, so at the moment we have let's say nothing concrete, but we have a very good indication on what the program will be. Um, um, so, so basically, um, as, as we see now, as things stand now, the program um, uh, gives you an eligibility to apply for citizenship when uh, you invest, when you make a contribution to the government. Um, the options, there, there are two main options. You can choose to go through the way of one year, or you can choose to opt for um, a period of three years, whereby after three years, you and the rest of your family will acquire citizenship by investment. If one chooses to make an investment of 750,000 euros contribution to the government, um, uh, one can go through the route of one year, where basically together with the contribution, uh, you make another contribution of 10,000 euros to a philanthropic organization, as well as investment in real estate. And there you have uh, the route of the one year. If the investor chooses to go through the route of the three years, one is to invest 600,000 euros um, actually contribute to the government, which is 50,000 euros less than before. Again, um, uh, contribute 10,000 euros to a philanthropic organization and invest in real estate. The investment in real estate has gone up to 700,000 euros. Um, whereas before it was much less, however, it has been proven that an investor who chooses citizenship um, as, his, as his route for himself and his family usually chooses um, a real estate project which is of a certain quality and a certain position. Um, usually we would see that, um, let's say, a three, four bedroom villa in a, in a nice location in front of the sea would still cost you around 700,000 euros. This is something which, which an investor for citizenship usually goes for. So that didn't really make, make a difference. The benefits, the benefits of having citizenship of Malta are definitely 
um, various. Uh, Malta is a, member of, a full member of the EU with the tax programs being fully accepted um, by the EU Commission. So uh, by having citizenship of an EU country, you are free to live, work and study in any of the EU countries as well as Switzerland. Apart from that, you have visa-free access to more than 183 countries, including UK, USA, and Canada. Apart from that, a citizen of Malta can avail himself of free healthcare and education with a low minimum presence. So the government doesn't really um, request the investor to prove the presence in Malta. So an investor can choose to, let's say, have the family in Malta, and um, he or she can choose to travel around the world and also um, spend, the, let's say, in this situation, spend you know most of the time in India, for example. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So um, uh, let's say, looking at the cost, we can compare it to various other um, EU countries, but we can say that Malta is still, um, let's say, one of the most cost-effective programs in Europe. Actually, only Malta and Cyprus give citizenship as, a, let's say, one can directly apply for citizenship there and then, whereas other countries, you have to, either the program is not available, or um, you, you'd have to live for um, years in the country to acquire citizenship. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, another way to get, uh, let's say, a gateway into Europe is permanent residency. The permanent residency is um, a way how one can acquire, again, um, in the Schengen area, you, uh, you have visa free travel in the Schengen area um, and you make an investment. The type of investment you make has to be real estate as well as investment in stocks and bonds. You hold these, the, these investments for a period of five years after which you can, you can um, let's say, sell and you still retain the um, uh, permanent residency for the main applicant and the rest of the family. The main applicant and the spouse can choose to also include their parents in the programs. So that is a very interesting option. Um, again, no presence is required. And uh, this, this program gives an automatic visa while waiting. Okay, so uh, and a new, let's say, uh, a, a new option that has come up, um, there are a couple of investment companies who are willing to finance um, uh, such, such investment, but if you require further information, we can open up more on that. So, again, um, uh, one of the most competitive programs in Europe and also, um, we see that the program takes around three months for, uh, for acquisition, for permanent residency to be acquired. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, apart from personal relocation, one might be interested to also um, relocate the company, let's say, or open a new company, uh, a separate company from the one um, he or she already has in India. This might be an option. Um, whereas one would choose to have a completely separate structure and consequently a completely separate tax um, obligation, okay, in Malta and not in his country of origin. So in Malta, we have um, an eased structure whereby a company which is already incorporated in another country can be translated into a Maltese corporation 
Um, and by that, you would be preserving the continuity of the company's legacy, whereby the reputation is still there, the financial track record is still there, um, which will eventually help you when you are dealing with, with other companies in Malta and the rest of Europe. Um, uh, Malta, is, is, as many of you might know, is in EU and therefore the Eurozone, so we use the Euro. Um, it's in the center of the Mediterranean, which is um, in the heart of Europe, whereby we have uh, you know, strong connections with, with mainland Europe, with Africa and also the Middle East. Um, Malta is also known to be strong when it comes to human resources, and the Maltese are usually, uh, let's say, multilingual, okay? Um, and the cost of labor is not high. It is not cheap, um, but it is not as high as compared to, let's say, Northern European countries, um, US or Canada, for example. Malta is also very popular to be um, uh, let's say, uh, an automatic um, decision for those who, who choose to have um, a balance between lifestyle um, and the work and the business. So um, again, we get lots of investors who choose to, who choose to have um, their corporation in Malta because they can have um, let's say best of both worlds when it comes to um, you know keeping a family life, having good education, and a safe um, country for for children, and also um, you know a good good business structure. We saw um, when when it's a case of a pandemic, like for example, what happened um, this year. We saw the government aiding businesses um, uh, with fiscal measures, such as, for example, um, providing wage subsidies of 800 euros per employee, for example, um, uh, providing subsidized water and electricity bills, um, and, and lots of other options, tax deferrals, for example. Um, we also had the distribution of vouchers, the famous government vouchers, uh, which were given to all nationals and also residents. So people who are um, who are living in Malta and have a residency um, uh, availed themselves of 100 euros in, in vouchers, which can, could be spent um, in restaurants and other um, you know, shops to kickstart the economy. Next slide. Please. So I will take over the floor a little for a little while from Janelle. Okay. Since she already mentioned how attractive it is to do business in Malta, I also wanted to point the attention to the kind of worldwide statistics of ease of doing business. As you can see, it's ranked 88 out of 190 economists worldwide, which is a perfect middle, which I would say is a pretty good for such a small island and it just keeps growing because Maltese companies eventually they enter international market, they they open new offices and the companies keep growing, growing and become more popular and more well known and obviously it's a benefit for the country as well. And the competitiveness index is 68.55% of the Maltese economy. And something recent, which seems to be of interest to, to many clients we had, and the, in general, Maltese legislation of the gaming companies. So just to, to, to give a little bit of overview, Malta has, uh, Malta's gaming companies, when they open, they're regulated by Malta's gaming authority, which is an official regulator for all our gaming sector with a proven track record of the strong regulatory regime and with the main focus of on responsible gaming, which fully supports the company, the gaming companies, provides them with all necessary assistance should they need any, and the advices on the legislation, et cetera, et cetera. From the Malta side, Malta offers very favorable and expert legislation for the, for the gaming companies. It offers them very favorable taxes compared to the 
different to, to the rest of the world and the euro. As you can see, it's the lowest in Europe, which is 500,000 a year, and for a gaming company, it's almost nothing considered their income. Um, when gaming companies are getting incorporated in Malta, they also are required to have a specific, specific gaming license. And again, the licenses for the gaming companies are very low comparing to the rest of the world, and they're granted for 10 years unless it should be determined otherwise. The, the tax uh, for the gaming revenue ge generated in Malta is only 5% again. And uh, Malta being EU member state and located in the EU, um, uh, provides freedom to gaming company to advertise and to act within all other EU states freely considering the legislation. And it's a very big benefit since they don't need to incorporate additional office or they don't need any additional permissions from the EU country. Um, the standard VAT is the, the same as for everyone else, it's 18%. However, since the game and legislation is slightly different from the regular laws, it provides a lot of various exemptions on gaming supplies. And as mentioned before many times, Malta provides a skill, skilled workforce, English workforce, ready to work for your company day and night, which would sustain your company and provide you with the all best possible results to, to, to improve your business. So what we say usually, so why not Malta, why some other countries? because the choice is always on the client, but if you compare, let it be Portugal, let it be Greece, let it be Malta, every country offers something of their own and Malta is not an exception. It's a beautiful country to live in, a lot of benefits. And if you have any questions, we would be very happy to answer them directly. Thank you.